Through the Gates of Death by Dion Fortune Chapter 7 The Death of the Body The human body is a machine, dependent for integrity of its parts and the supply of its working, like any other machine upon the fuel. It is a machine for generating en the energy which is employed by the personality in the process of spiritual unfoldment. For it is by means of the experiences undergone when in the body that the soul gathers together the raw material which it works upon in the process of its evolution. The occultist who knows these things is therefore not sentimental over the physical body, but endeavors to keep it in good repair while he has it because good work cannot be done with a bad tool. We should learn to think of death as a part of the process of growth. A caterpillar dies as a worm to be reborn as a butterfly. In many of the lower forms of existence, the cycle of life goes on under our eyes. In the higher forms, however, part of the cycle takes place in the visible sphere of matter and part of it in the invisible sphere of mind. What we call birth is the process of taking on a physical body and what we call death is a process of discarding it. And the process of birth include more than the labor. So do the process of death include more than the passing of the breath. If, of course, by death we simply mean the stopping of the human machine, then death is an instantaneous occurrence, such as it is popularly believed to be. But if by death we mean some total of the process which constitute the transition from one phase of existence to another, we are speaking of death as the esotericist understands it. And it is in this sense that we shall consider it in these pages. There are two ways in which death may come. Naturally, and in accordance with divine law, or unnaturally, as a breach of divine law. Strange as it may seem, the esotericist does not reckon death by disease as among the natural deaths. Disease is due to a breach of God's law. In some way, violence has been done to nature, and the breakdown of the human machine is the result. Natural death, the death brought about by the working of divine law, only takes place when the karma allotted for that incarnation has been worked out. Until this is done, the vital forces will keep old age at bay and retain the powers but little abated to an advanced age, as is proved by the many instances of men and women strong in God's service, far beyond the allotted span of three score years and ten. Natural death only takes place owing to the wearing out of the working parts of the machine, or to change the metaphor to a more exact one, to the silting up of the tissues. The machine depends for its working upon the balance of intake and output technically known as metabolism. The intake is always in excess of the normal output in order that there may be a reserve available for emergencies. In childhood and adolescence this extra intake is absorbed in growth. During maturity in reproduction. That which is not absorbed in physical reproduction is or should be worked off in some emotionally satisfying pursuit, whether work or play. As soon as the upbuilding phase of life is passed, the surplus of intake or output begins to be stored in the tissues in its most compact chemical forms. Hence the wise and witty saying that a man is as old as his arteries. 
there are various ways in which natural death may come. As time goes on, the heart finds it more and more difficult to pump blood through the increasingly inelastic channels of the arteries. The blood supply to the various organs becomes inadequate, and one or another may in consequences get out of order and cease to function, thus depriving the system of some essential product or service, and so stopping the machine. Or one of the smaller arteries, usually in the brain, may become so weakened that it can no longer cope with the increasing pressure of the blood pump by a still adequate heart finally bursts causing the well-known phenomena of a stroke equally the heart on its part may no longer may no longer be able to overcome the resistance of the arteries and finally stops its rhythmical drive at the time of lowest vitality usually in the small hours of the night and the person dies in his sleep this is true normal harmonious form of death. It is ushered in, not by any definite disease, but by a gradually increasing tendency to fatigue, revealed and compensated by the steady rising of the tide of sleep, more and more of the 24 hours being spent in tranquil oblivion, until finally consciousness is withdrawn and never returns. It is thus that the soul passes when it has fulfilled its tasks and has no more to do in the earth life of that incarnation. The unnatural or pathological death of the body is brought about by some external agency. Either the mechanical injury of a vital part, the poisoning of the vital processes, whether by some substance taken into the body or by the excreta of bacteria that have found lodgment in the tissues, or by the deprivation of an adequate supply of some factor necessary to the fueling of the machine, whether it be food, vitamins, water, air, or sunlight. Every ill that flesh is heir to will find a place in one of these three categories, and the esotericists regards them all as forms of pathological death, for given different condition they could all have been avoided. If the injury had not taken place, the man would have lived. If he had not come into contact with the virulent germ, the trouble would not have started. If he had adequate supplies of the necessities in life, neither too much so that the issues were replete, or too little so that they were enfeebled, he would have been alive today. We can always say of these pathological forms of death that if such and such a thing had not happened, the dead would not have died. Therefore, we say that these deaths are all unnatural, and if we were living in the golden age, of earth's perfection they would not have occurred the normal way of dying is to die in the sleep in extreme old age 